So I have defined the ordinary differential equation based mass balancing for a set of metabolic reactions. And I have told you how you can get rid of the left hand sides of those equations to get rid of the differential terms. And at the end, you will have a set of linear equations. The next question is how you can solve this set of linear equations. Here I will talk about underdetermined systems. So what is underdetermined? Here I will define degrees of freedom of a system. This is the definition of degrees of freedom for a set of equations. So it is equal to the difference between number of unknowns and number of independent equations. The difference between number of unknowns and number of independent equations. So if degrees of freedom is zero, which means that the number of unknowns, it is equal to the number of independent equations, such systems are referred as determined system and determined systems are solvable very easily. If degrees of freedom is zero greater than zero, which means that you have more unknowns that, than the number of independent equations, such systems are referred as underdetermined system, which means that you don't have a single solution for this system. You have many solutions. And metabolic reaction based systems are most of the time underdetermined. So the question will be for those underdetermined systems, you have your linear equations, right? After you made the left hand side equal to zero. So for this system, you will have many solutions. How will you choose a solution among all those many solutions? So we'll talk about this in the next slide, but let's give a couple of very simple examples on determined and underdetermined systems. So here we see a set of linear equations. We have two equations, two unknowns. So number of unknowns is equal to number of independent equations. Our degrees of freedom is zero. So we can easily solve this set of equations, right? So x1 is four plus x1. If I put four plus x2, sorry. If I put this expression here, I will have four plus five x1 is equal to 6. So from here, x1 will be equal to 2 over 5, for example. Then, since I know x1, I can use one of those equations to identify x2. So I made a mistake, I think, in the uh, solution. But if you do it correctly, you will see that x1 is 5, x2 is 1. What about this? This is the given linear set of equations for us. So we have one equation and we have two unknowns, x1 and x2. So the degrees of freedom is greater than 0, which means that this is an underdetermined system which means that we have many solutions. Because, you know, there's not a single x1 and x2 value here. x1 can be 5, x2 can be 4, this is a, so, sorry, x2 can be 1, this is a solution. x1 can be 100, x2 can be 96, 
this is also a solution that satisfies this equation. Or x1 can be 0, x2 can be minus 4. This is also a set of uh, x1 and x2 that satisfies this underdetermined system. So we have many, many solutions, many, many couples of x1 and x2 that satisfies this underdetermined system. Since degrees of freedom is greater than zero, we have many solutions satisfying this set of equations. Let's also look at another underdetermined system. So here, at first sight, we have two equations, two unknowns. You may think that this is a determined system, but this wording is very important. We are talking here about independent equations. If you multiply the first equation by minus 3, you will get exactly the, sa the second equation, right? So indeed, equation 1 and equation 2, they are the same. They are dependent equations. They are just obtained from each other, right? By some multiplication or division uh, of their coefficients. So here, the number of equations is 2, but number of independent equations is still 1. And we have two unknowns, so Based on this formula, our degrees of freedom is still greater than one, 0, and we will have, again, infinite solutions, a lot of solutions for this system. It won't be like this here. Since degrees of freedom is 0, we have only one solution vector. x1 is 5, x2 is 1. There is no other solution that can satisfy this set of equations. So, as I have shortly said, metabolic networks are usually underdetermined. In metabolic networks, our unknowns are reaction rates, right? We want to predict reaction rates. And our equations are written around intracellular metabolites. So, our equations show the balances around metabolites. So what does it mean if metabolic networks are underdetermined? This means that there are more reactions, more unknowns in metabolic networks than the number of independent equations, the number of uh, intracellular, the balances around intracellular metabolites, the metabolites within your system's boundary. So what is our strategy if degrees of freedom is greater than zero. You can follow two strategies. One is you can use optimization techniques to select one optimum solution among many other solutions. We will talk about this in more detail. Yes, you have many, many solutions if degrees of freedom is greater than zero. But among those solutions, you can choose the one which satisfies a certain optimization criteria. This will be our approach throughout this course, by the way. The other approach is, let's say you have four unknowns, four, sorry, six unknowns and four equations, four independent equations, which means that your degrees of freedom is two. If you have the measured values of two of your unknowns, two of your rates, number of unknowns will change to four from six, right? Then you will have the same number of equations and the same number of unknowns, and your degrees of freedom will be zero. So what I mean is, if you measure rates equal in number to degrees of freedom value, Let's say your degrees of freedom is 3. If you measure 3 of the unknown rates, then 
your degrees of freedom will change to zero. You will have a determinant system and you can solve this determinant system to get a unique solution, a single solution vector. This is another strategy. If your degrees of freedom is greater than zero, if you have an underdetermined